Welcome to another edition of Sports Talk. I'm Tyler Sloan. Get lucky, one record of the year at last night's Grammy Awards. But so far in the girls' soccer season, the McKinney ISD teams haven't needed much luck at all. All three teams are off to convincing starts, and we check in with their coaches to learn about the new talent and the old faces contributing to their respective success. We also have another Dennis Baker State Farm Scholar Athlete of the Week coming up. We kick off Sports Talk right now. Boyd is off to a great start in girls soccer this season. Seven wins, only one loss and one draw. I'm joined by their head coach, Megan Wilson. And coach, thank you so much for joining us today. It's your first season as McKinney Boyd's girls soccer coach. You're coming over from Frisco Wakeland. Mm -hmm. What was sort of the, it like, you know, getting to meet your new team and seeing them early on this season, trying to get your style implemented onto them? You know, um, they're a great group of girls and uh, they've made it so easy, you know. Um, Definitely when you, go, when you come to a new school, there's always a transition period, them learning my style and me learning about them. And, you know, there's always that transition period. But um, they have done a fantastic job. They've done everything we've asked them to as coaches. Um, you know, every time we've asked them to do anything, they've just they've stepped up and, and said, yes, ma'am. You know, and, so, and that's all you can ask for. Um, and they're going out and having a great season because of it so far. Now, last year, this boy team, they lost in the second round of the playoffs to Saxe. And so this year, obviously, that was a little bit disappointing last year. And I'm sure they have some more goals and wanting to go further in the playoffs this year. What would they tell you about what they wanted to accomplish? Yeah, you know, absolutely. I mean, I think the goal every year uh, is to make it to the state tournament. And um, they are a team that is good enough to make it to the state tournament and to be there. And so um, when we sat down at the beginning of this year and kind of talked about that stuff, that was first and foremost at the front of the list was, you know, making sure that we do the things to prepare ourselves so that we're back there in April. Um, you know, they're, they're doing everything that we're asking them to do. And it, so far, they're on a good road. Now, you've so. played in two great fields as far as tournaments so far this year. You've played at Fort Worth Nolan. It's an elite prep showcase mm -hmm. tournament. And then you also have gone down to Georgetown where they have the state tournament every year, played some good competition there. What were some of the things that you're wanting to see through those two tournaments? Uh, you know, I think both of those tournaments, um, the whole motivation for going to them is to face up against people that uh, – are the best in the state, you know, whether it's a private school or even a team from outside, because we played a team from California. Um, they always offer some of the best talent um, in and around the area, and you're going to get a very good gauge early on of what you're going to look like going forward. You know, going to the Georgetown tournament, um, that was an opportunity to face up against, you know, some teams from other regions that you're not going to get to face um, unless you see them in the playoffs. And so, you know, the goal for those is for sure to just go down and, you know, get a look at some people early on and then compare yourselves to them and see what you have to work on. Now, your so. team's scoring a ton of goals so far this year. As Sydney Dolzin, she has 10 goals already on this season. She's had three games where she scored a brace, two goals in, in a game. And you've also have you know, a lot of contributions from Taylor Cobb has six goals. Mm -hmm. Sarah Norman's been pushing up and scoring as well from midfield. Where is this attacking style kind of base at? How are they creating so many chances? You know, um, Taylor and Sid especially are just very creative forwards in general. Um, they're just, and their chemistry together is fantastic. And I think um, they understand the game. They read each other well. Uh, they have a knack for being in the right place at the right time, which is always something good to have as a forward. And uh, they just, they're playing right now. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's nice to see this early on. I'm hoping that they can t continue to have the same chemistry going forward for the rest of the year because so far it's made a tremendous difference, you know, having them. And then Libby Murphy in our center mid facilitating a lot of that movement um, has made all of that possible. So uh, it's, it's been fantastic so far. Yeah, at center midfield is such an important position for, for every team in soccer because they're sort of, you know, they're both trying to set up the attack and they also have to be the ones that kind of 
help go back in defense, especially when teams try to counter. And your defense has been solid all year long. Only two goals you've given up. They are amazing. Um, I am so proud of the work that they have come in and done uh, this early on so far. I mean, we've only allowed two goals um, all year. And they just, they're athletic, they're fast, they're big, they're strong. They play as a unit, they play together, they have a lot of fun. And I think you see that when you get out on the field with them and it, and it makes a difference because they just, they know where they're gonna be, they know where their teammates gonna be and they just, they just play as a unit back there and it makes a huge difference, so. And that's gonna be big coming up into district play. It's one of the toughest girls soccer districts that you can even think of. You have Plano West in there defending state champions as well as you know, the Allens and McKinney's good as well. When you look ahead to that district play, obviously you come from a Frisco district that was very competitive in 4A, some of the best teams in that district. Uh, does it change kind of your philosophy about trying to manage their minutes and stuff like that through district? Um, you know, I think any player, any coach, uh, wants to play in the best district in the, in the state, and this district is arguably that. Um, you know, so do we have to manage people? Sure you do. You have to manage and you have to um, evaluate each game, each district, and you, I mean each game by game thing and see what each game is going to bring and that's how you go out and you just approach, um, approach that. You know, do the minutes go up and down depending upon game? Sure they do. Um, but I think every single one of these girls knows what's at stake. They know what the expectation is and um, you know, it's, it's exciting to be able to play. I, I love the fact that we get to play in the best district in the state because you know game in and game out, it's going to be a battle and you're gonna be prepared when it comes time for the playoffs. And so. obviously four teams get in, you know, in the district mm -hmm. into the playoffs. Is there a big difference between coaching and let's say an eight or nine team district, some of those districts that are really big compared to a small district like this where there's six teams and you only get 10 games? Um, I don't know that there's necessarily a difference. Um, I mean, well, there probably is a difference. Um, I've actually only played in districts where there were six teams. So um, you know go, going into each game that you have to make it count um, and that those games are gonna matter come d going down the road. You know, uh, you know, in a bigger district, uh, there is a little bit more wiggle room, I think, just to be able to, you know, if you were to lose a game, you still have maybe a couple of others to get you back on the right road. But that being said, some of those bigger districts are just as tough, if not harder. And, you know, those games matter to them just as much. So, I mean, I don't know that there's necessarily a difference. It just means that you're going to get a couple extra games in, um, you know, but we prepare for that by going ahead and putting some into a non-district. So it's, I don't know that there's really a difference. It's just, you know. Exactly. Looking at your non-district schedule, coming up next for you is a game against your former team that you used to coach, Frisco mm -hmm. Wakeland. Uh, talk about maybe some of the emotions going into that game. You're going to see some players that, that, you, that you used to coach before and also seeing that friendly competition because, mm -hmm. I mean, you had a really good Wakeland team. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's going to be fun getting to play them tomorrow. Uh, I'm absolutely looking forward to seeing some of those girls and seeing how they're doing this year. Um, but at the end of the day, this is my team. This, these are my new girls and these are my new babies. And um, I'm extremely proud of what they're doing. And uh, I hope we go out and kick their butt. You know, I mean, that's, that's my goal is for us to go out there and, um, and play that game. You know, one of the reasons I scheduled the game was because um, I knew it would be a good game for both teams. Um, Wakeland is probably one of the best 4A teams in the state and Boyd is one of the best 5A teams in the state and so it was a good competition either way you know and um, so absolutely I mean there is some emotion there and there's you know I, I'm looking forward to seeing those kids but at the end of the day my heart now is with Boyd and um, I, I'm ready to go kick their butt. Now you've had such a good season already obviously I said earlier 7-1-1 one one is your record but there's, it's obviously early, been early in the season. You still have district to go through, and there's still some more room to grow for these players. Uh, what, what sort of things do you think they need to get better at throughout the course of the year to become the complete team? Um, you know, uh, we, we've got to get a little bit better in our midfield. Um, that's an area that we are still continue, continuing to work on day by day. Um, but right now, you know, the chemistry is fantastic. They're playing as a unit. Um, and but you, you got to just keep them smiling, you know, keep them doing exactly what they're doing because right now they're doing everything right. Um, and so I'm pretty proud of the way they're going out and approaching each game. I think, you know, each game we've got to learn from and I think we have to 
um, evaluate each one of those performances and say, okay, what did we do good in this game? What did we do bad in this game? And then that's what you take and you work on the next week. And then hopefully as the season goes on, um, you've improved in a whole bunch of areas, you know, and hopefully by then you're ready to go and play those games and uh, you don't have to worry about not being prepared. Um, you know, this group I think is very mentally tough, uh, which will help them tremendously going down the road into the playoffs. Um, but each one of those games that they step into for the next few weeks here, they've got to get mentally tougher every single time they step onto the field and, um, and keep sending the messages to opponents that we're here to play and we're ready to go. So, well, we can't yeah. wait to see how Boyd does the rest of the season. It's Coach Wilson, exciting. thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. And that old saying goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, Boyd is 7-1-1 one, one on the year so far. They are smooth sailing through this non-district slate. Looks good signs going ahead into district play. Let's see if they can keep it up.